Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my DIY solar install. This is part eight in the series. Just got done with my first inspection with only one thing being pointed out. Uh, I need to lengthen the cables and or wiring in between the disconnect and the main PV breaker in the main panel. But uh, here we are, we're we're ready to install the panels. And here's what I rigged up in order to get the panels on the roof myself. Took two six foot ladders, clamped a board in between and lifted a panel up there so that I can climb on the roof and then get the panel, grab the panel and take it up there. I actually could have had this all installed before my first inspection. I thought I had to have it, have the first inspection before I put the panels up because it would cover up the solar decks and the junction boxes. So I thought I had to have those open so the inspector could see them. But uh, I guess for City of Phoenix, they're not allowed to get on the roof because they're just as clumsy as I am and may fall off. But uh, let me show you how we're going to, going to attach the panels to the railing. Well, this is one of the ways that we're going to attach it. This is called a camo. That's what Iron Ridge calls it. So this slides into the rail like that. You put the panel on there, slide this to the edge of the panel and then you rotate it, it catches the edge of the panel, clamps it down, and then it lifts up and locks into place like that. Makes it so that you can bring the edge of the panel right up to the edge of the rail. Makes for a cleaner, slicker install. They are more expensive than doing it the traditional way that they originally had. But these would just go on the ends. Uh, you could probably use this for every single panel, but uh, that would be really expensive. So in between all of them, you use this. They call it a UFO, Universal Fastening Object, but it also kind of looks like a UFO on the top. So on the underside is what's called a weeb. W-E-E-B. There are other videos that explain what a weeb is way better than I can. But essentially it's got teeth on, uh, the weeb is actually this thin little washer on the bottom. It's got teeth that bite into the panel and then it's got teeth down here on the end that bite into the rail. So when you put it down in there and lock it into place, it bites into both panels and the rail bonding it all together. That's how you're able to use just a couple of uh, grounding spots, grounding lugs on the rails because it bonds the whole system together. So that's what we're going to be installing today. And let's go get to it. Got a lot of work to do.
I got all my panels installed. This is the section that's over the garage. These four right here are from Canadian Solar. And then these three are Hanwall. These are 305 watts and these are 320 watts. When I went to order eight more panels, the Canadian Solar were out of stock. And unless I wanted to wait, they offered the Hanwha panels instead for the same price. So I went ahead and did that. So I put three of them there. This is the front section right here. The six panels there. And this is the back side of the roof. This is the west facing roof right here. Got 12 Canadian solar panels right here. And then five more Hanwha panels going up this way right here. So I was able to get the panels on the roof completely by myself, which was definitely a challenge. When I did this, it was January 31st and February 1st of 2019, while the rest of the country was going through far sub-zero temperatures. Uh, in Phoenix, we had like mid 70s. So I was doing this, I, while I was doing this, when I got in the sun, I was actually quite warm. I was sweating during this. So uh, it's just uh, funny how the rest of the country is freezing and we're out here sweating, having to use air conditioning. So I got through my final inspection from the city of Phoenix. Inside the panel here, finally got the main breaker derated down to a 175 amp breaker from a 200, which allows me to use a 50 amp breaker for the solar. I also installed the CTs on the main lines coming in. I also installed new cabling so that it goes, it comes in and goes up around the top and into the main breaker instead of coming down along the bottom and coming up this side into the breaker because the neutral bus bar is along this edge and I couldn't access half of it. It was a pain. But uh, got through all the inspections with City of Phoenix. There's my approval sticker on the side there. So now I just have to contact SRP so they can come out. I guess they have to do an inspection as well and then plug a meter into that socket and I should be good to go. So the next video on my DIY solar that you should see, uh, I should be powering the system on. It's pretty exciting that we are finally to this point. I am done with the installation though. So that does it for part eight in my DIY solar installation series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and sh share for more I can do it myself videos.